Good morning guys We will be live in a bit Good morning everyone, July 1, 2020 Ilang buwan na nakalipas since the beginning of the year We're still on quarantine But happy and coping, it's the month of health Welcome to Health Month and welcome to Mark Your Day Welcome to the Nutrition Month. Napakasaya po natin sa umagang ito. It's, uh, ano araw na ba ngayon? Wednesday. Maraming salamat po to those who have tuned in early. Kuya Ferds Brigera of Unilab. Palakpakan natin ang mga taga Unilab. Palakpakan din natin si Jason Matias. Good morning. Si Ate Lynette Masayon. Magandang umaga din po kay Ma'am Lynette. And to my beloved family in Ozamis, my cousin May Ann, Alfred, and the rest of the tag teams, my buntag kaninyong tanan. It's the Nutrition Month. My buntag also to our friends from Boracay, to Margot and the family. I would like to invite you to invite your friends over to this discussion. Today, we will talk about good health and nutrition. How can we be healthier? What can you expect from the show today? I will be talking about some tips on how to stay healthy. I'm drinking chia seeds. Uh, nakakabusog. Very good, healthy drink. Um, it's a super food. I also have my, my bread from Little Cakes Factory. And also, my morning coffee. Good in antioxidants. Wala po siyang sugar. Wala po siyang gatas. It's just coffee. Two calories only for a cup of black coffee. Good morning, Sir Alain Siskar. Alain is the boss chief and our dear partner in Gyoza. Gyoza House, the best gyoza in Metro Manila and in the Philippines. Can even taste better than the gyozas in Japan. <laughs> Try it. It's really good. So, thank you very much everyone for for tuning in early. We have a lot to talk about because the only way to fight COVID is really to stay healthy. That's the consensus. And so, since this is Nutrition Month, ano ang pinakamagandang paraan para tayo po ay manatiling malakas and healthy given the challenges to our community health dala nitong ating COVID-19. So, Atin pong uh, puntahan muna ang mga balita before we talk about nutrition and good health. Oh, at the end of the show, by the way, I will be talking about something interesting. What is this? Let's talk about Mr. Harry Roque, Secretary Roque's statement na nanalo na daw po tayo against UP. Totoo po ba yun? Totoong interpretasyon po ba yun nung statement ni Secretary Roque? Marami na pong memes ang lumalabas. Nakakatawa po yung ibang mga memes. So let's talk about those uh, a little later. Let's first check the headlines. What's in the news today? Let's begin with the Philippine Star. According to the Philippine Star, check that out. Nine Mindanao provinces are now seen as virus hotspots. 
a virus hotspot is declared over an area when there are new cases uh, after the area has not been has not seen a, a confirmed case in two weeks and then suddenly new cases emerge they will be considered a hot spot what are these areas these are the areas of Bukidnon Lanao del Norte Misamis Occidental That's the area of Cagayan de Oro Lanao del Norte is the area of Iligan City also Those, those are chartered cities That's around that area From Region 11 Davao del Norte That's where Tagum is area Davao del Sur That's where Digos City is also located around that area Davao Oriental South Cotabato Sultan Kudarat and Maguindanao I'll read that again for the benefit of our fellow Filipinos in that area Bukidnon Lanao del Norte Misamix Occidental, Davao del Norte, Davao del Sur, Davao Oriental, South Cotabato, Sultan Kudarat, and Maguindanao. It doesn't mean though that if you are not in those areas, you are free from the virus. Dapat mag-ingat pa rin po ang ating mga kababayan even if you're outside of those areas. Because from the latest from DOH, let's check that. Tingnan natin to ha. Tingnan natin to. Look at that, my friends. Eight, 1,080 cases. If you notice, let's expand that. Move to the side a bit. Look. 370 ang others. Napakarami sa Cebu. Manila is around 100 something But please notice yung others Dumadami sa ibang probinsya outside of Metro Manila and Cebu So we need to be very careful my friends in managing that situation of COVID spread in the other areas Let's move over to the Philippine Star or sorry, to the Manila Standard. NCR remains to be the... to have retained the status of GCQ and Cebu is now under ECQ or still is under ECQ. That area in Region 7 was the topic of President Duterte in his press conference late last night where he berated pinagalitan o sa binisaya pagikasabaan ang mga taga Cebu not just Cebu but in other areas as well Talisay for being hard headed matigas ang ulo sa Tagalog o sa binisaya pa gahi kay ulo mga gahi kulo Matigas ang ulo, hindi sumusunod sa mga standards para maiwasan yung spread ng virus. Sad news also in the headlines of the Manila Standard or the front page, four army soldiers killed by police in Holo. That's a sad development. The police, the military men came from a surveillance of a of a uh, suspected terrorist group and then they were shot they were killed by members of the police force so those are the headlines coming from the Manila Standard maayong buntag sa akong mga kahigalaan shout out Team Sikad from Osamis those are the biker group that's the biker group the bikers of Osamis from Cogeo, the Kizon Vismonte family, Vismonte Kizon family, maayong bunta. Good morning to our friends up in Cogeo. Good morning also to 
Maayong buntag to Kita Bang Wolf. Also to Margot and the family in lovely, lovely Boracay. Thanks for dropping by. Here are the details on that news. Cops kill four military agents. Army chief cries rub out. In that news, they detailed how the event happened. They were driving in from Patikul Sulu. They were stopped in a checkpoint. They were led to an area near the police station. One of the majors or the officers of that vehicle uh, of, of uh, military men came down, went down the vehicle and was shot. Another went down and was also shot and so were four and two others. Total number of casualties, four. The police claimed in the report that it was a preemptive move because they say according to the report that the military men came down from their vehicle armed and so the claim of the police was a shootout that it apparently was a shootout or not apparently that allegedly it was a shootout but the AFP found CCTV found CCTV from that area which clearly shows that there was not no such shootout the army personnel went down unarmed did not fire a single shot were killed very sad incident good thing that the head of the the police the army though said although they're very angry they will not cause this to drive a wedge between the AFP and the police. They will seek to de-escalate. But they have sought the help of the NBI to investigate and whoever should be responsible for this should be made responsible. The bodies of the slain uh, army personnel have been flown over from the area to Metro Manila. Also in the news from the Inquirer, enrollment still 15 million short of DepEd target. Medyo malungkot po yan because that clearly shows that many of the families have decided not to enroll their kids this school year. So what the DepEd did was to extend the period of employment, of employment, sorry, <laughs> employment, enrollment. Hindi po employment, enrollment ng mga bata. DepEd extended this to give opportunity for the parents to to enroll their children. I hope the parents do decide. Yes, uh, last Monday in the news, there was an article there that says the Congress, a few congressmen, were inviting members of the private sector to help the public school system by donating equipment laptop and other equipment necessary to do the classes online according to this congressman there is a program called adopt a school program where a, a donating private sector organization could charge 150% of their donation to their tax liability so ibig sabihin kapag nagbigay po itong kumpanyang ito ng mga, pro, uh, ng mga equipment to a school, pwede nilang ibawas up to 150% dun sa kanilang babayarang buwis. That way, the private sector can pitch in but also not um, uh, suffer from it too much. Instead, it's like, just like transferring the, the burden over to the private sector but they can deduct it from their, from their tax liabilities or from their tax due rather. That's really sad. Kuya Perry Kamba has a theory dun sa shootout in Holo. He says, maybe it's a race for the bounty. We don't know that, Kuya Perry. So, I will not speculate. I'm just here to read the news. Sana hindi po totoo. Maayong buntag. Ate Ani Wilwaiko Reyes. Good morning, the Reyes family. Thank you for dropping by. 
All right, those are from the headlines today. It's 8:15. Anong naalala nyo doon sa Nutrition Month when we were growing up? Nutrition Month, usually maraming mga programs ng eskwelahan. So that's what we will talk about today. Um, interestingly, ano po ang mga nangyari sa araw na ito in history? Ito nga, uh, while we're heading towards the what's interesting section, we thought of uh, adding this portion where we talk about something significant that happened in the world today. In history, ano po yung mga nangyari in history sa araw na ito? Sige nga, ano nga yung mga nangyari sa araw na ito? Number one, the Battle of Jettysburg. Ano po itong Battle of Jettysburg? Familiar ba kayo nitong Battle of Jettysburg? This happened today, July 1 to 3, in, if I'm not mistaken, in Pennsylvania. In the United States. And this Battle of Jettysburg makes yung sinasabi nilang Black Lives Matter also relevant kasi itong Battle of Jettysburg was the turning point between the Civil War of the United States. Yung Amerika po na kakabuo lang ng gobyerno, the United States, si Abraham Lincoln yung bagong presidente. Merong mga Confederate States na ayaw sumunod dun sa United States dahil gusto nilang ikip ang kanilang mga slaves, yung kanilang mga black slaves. Kaya umaklas po itong mga states na ito at nagkagera po sa America Civil War, nilabanan ng Confederate States ang mga Unionists or yung mga gustong maniwala na dapat United ang mga estado sa Amerika nag po yan ng medyo matindi and they have lost so many lives um, mas madami lang ng konti yung loss of lives nila sa Vietnam pero yung Battle of Jettysburg yan yung turning point ng gera kaya nanalo yung yung mga uh, those for the United States rather than separating a few of the states. Dito din po nang galing yung, yes, according to Kuya James Bayeta, four score and seven years ago, our forefathers, a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Kaya po yung line na yan, and all men are created equal. Kaya Kuya James, it had something to do with black lives. Kaya black lives matter, Absolutely. Kailan po yan, uh, uh, Ma'am Trisha? 1863, July 1, 1863. Today, nangyari yung Battle of Jettysburg. All right. At least we have uh, something new in our uh, knowledge today. Ano pang nangyari sa araw na ito? The first day, the first running of the Tour de France. The first race of Tour de France also happened today in uh, France. And what the Tour de France is one of the biggest races, bike races on earth. So that's an interesting piece of history right there. Tour de France and the Battle of Jettysburg happened today. Before we continue, let me share with you my word of encouragement. Oh, word of encouragement po muna tayo. Ano ang ating word of encouragement sa umagang ito? A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Kita nyo yan? Yung atin po palang feeling, yung ating puso has a lot to do with how healthy we become. Sabi dyan, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Local history, according to Ma'am Farah Lozano, 53rd araw ng Davao del Norte. Holiday mi karun, Attorney Mark. So, happy 53rd araw ng Davao del Norte sa atong mga kahigalaan, igsuon o mga amigo diha sa Davao del Norte. Happy anniversary! Happy araw ng Davao! Enjoy your day, enjoy your day, my friends in Davao. Del Norte. Okay, that's nice. So remember, keep yourself joyful. It's good for your heart. 
Don't allow any circumstance to crush your spirit because it will dry up our bones. To my dear friends and family in Iligan, Auntie Myla, Uncle Lando, and all our friends in Iligan, maayong buntag ka ninyong tanan. And to my dear friend who's one of the best suki of the show, Kuya Mel Chan, good morning, Kuya Mel. I hope you will have a great day and fill your heart with joy because it's good medicine. We can fight anything along the way if we have a joyful heart. Do you believe that? I hope you all believe that is our word for today. Now, what do I want to share with you? Okay, Battle of Jettysburg, Tour de France. Pero hindi po yan yung gusto kong i-share sa atin sa umagang ito. Ang gusto ko pong i-share sa atin sa umagang ito is has something to do with how we can be healthier and how we can live longer. Okay? Ano po ang pwede nating gawin so we can stay healthy and strong? I have been an athlete all my life and I have tried to keep myself fit my entire life. So I would like to share with you some tips on health and fitness in today's What's Interesting. To the Morales family, good morning Ate Jen, Kuya Ton, and to our future Dr. Hannah and Kuya AJ. Good morning, uh, Manny Randy Campos from Phnom Penh. Good morning, Honorable Judge Orlando Gallardo, my dear table tennis coach and second father. Good morning, Mayong Buntag kaninyo sa Iligan City. Okay, so, um, yes, uh, itong aking uh, fight for my good health uh, is a regular thing because I know my facts, I know my genes might not be the best possible genes judging from the health condition of my parents. My mom uh, unfortunately passed away at a very young age of cancer and my father uh, suffered a heart attack some years back. And so I'm trying to be healthy and careful. So what do I do? I have a regular health check. So I have my blood taken every so often and we just had my blood extracted a couple of days ago because our blood chemistry tells us a lot about how healthy we are and so um ano yan ate Trisha? Nang? yes at marami pa nga sabi ni because our business we we sell food and we sell cinnamon we i'm the official product the tester, as you know. So, medyo challenging yung aming trabaho negosyo. I try to keep fit, but when the medical result came out, um, my results were not perfect. Were not perfect. Since hindi siya... So, I consulted friends and I asked them what I need to do and whether I need to take medicine because my cholesterol is a little elevated, my uric is a little elevated, my uh, etc. Not very high, but they're a little over the upper limit of what's normal. So I consulted friends to uh, ask them whether I should drink medicine and the consensus that I got was, it's not so high, Mark. You don't need to drink medicine because any form of medication will have some side effects of some form. And so the suggestion coming from our doctor friends is to actually go on a change in diet, change in nutrition. So yes, I will commit to greater um, or improved quality of what I ingest or what I eat para po mas magiging healthy. So before I share with you five things that I believe can help all of us stay healthy and I'm going to preach to myself today, I would like to say hi to my dear friend, Marian Mendoza from New York. Uy, we have a guest from New York. Mayong buntag. Uh, uh, Marian Mendoza used to be an economics professor. She's a doctor in economics and she works in, in the U.S. One of the most brilliant people I know from Davao City. So take care, keep safe there and the rest of the family and her family, her kids are, I, I love how her kids are so fond of, 
of Asian martial arts. Well, because she's also fond of Asian martial arts. Okay, so what are five things that I'd like to share with you on how we could stay healthy given the current situation that we're in where there's really no cure and no vaccine yet. And so the best way we can prevent any a deterioration in our health is to really stay fit and healthy. So first point, we need to decide to be fit and healthy. It's a decision. It's not going to happen automatically. Some people are blessed to be more resilient than others. But even if you are blessed with outstanding genes that can resist many forms of illnesses, you still need to be uh, to make that decision to stay fit and healthy. Hindi po pwedeng i leave that to chance. According to my friend, he's uh, one of the best, um, what you call that, onco surgeons in the Philippines. He has the highest credential of any cancer surgeon uh, you could find on earth because he has done multiple post-grads. He studied in New York, did research. So yung lahat ng suffixes to your name, PhD, etc. He has all those. And he, he told me this. His name, by the way, is Dr. Edong Permites. Dr. Permites told me this. Mark, fitness and health are two different things. It doesn't mean you're fit that you're healthy. It doesn't also mean that you're healthy that you're fit. What does he mean? You can be so healthy inside, internally, but really unfit to perform your daily work because fitness has something to do with your physical capability to perform optimally given the situation. Kung ikaw po ay, for example, like me, a public speaker, I need to be fit for my job because I stand on stage for what? Eight hours on multiple days. So I need to be fit for that. Now, I can be so fit for that because I am a runner and I try to do a lot of cardio and I can last speaking the whole week, all five days of the week on my feet. But it doesn't mean that I'm healthy. There was a time that in 20, when was that? Around 2016 that I was doing, oh, so many. We did, I think, 180 between 160 or 180, I could not remember. Definitely over 150. What do I mean 150? 150 whole day events in one year. So that's practically half of the entire year I was on my feet with my mouth open talking. Now, was I fit? Yes, I survived that year. Was I healthy? No. My cholesterol levels were record-breaking that year. Would you believe that my cholesterol reached 600 plus? It was that year that my cholesterol was so bad I had to I had to drink medication for 3 months. So being fit and being healthy are two distinct things. Now, according to Dr. Permites, you want to work on both. You want to really keep healthy, you want to decide to eat right, sleep right and you know, keep yourself internally healthy, but you also want to be fit. That's why runners say, this is what runners say. Running won't add years to your life, but it will add life to your years. It will not add years to your life. Hi to my, my favorite father-in-law, Daddy Eddie Feliciano. He is watching from home. So it doesn't mean you will add more years if you become a runner, but that doesn't mean that you will not benefit from it because the benefit is not a guarantee you will live longer. The benefit is you will actually be fit and energetic to live your life. So what do you want? You want to be both fit and healthy, not just healthy, not just fit, okay? Work on both being fit and healthy okay according to kuya mel he is guilty i believe i'm healthy but not fit anymore yes that's why we need to make that decision today and there's no better time for you to decide and to start working on it than today my friend so again those are two distinct things being fit and healthy are two separate things so you want to be both all right number two According to many experts, 
one of the biggest sources of illness is really stress. So we want to manage our stress levels, okay? Allow me to distinguish between the different kinds of stresses. There are what you call the more serious kinds of stresses brought about by um, a failed marriage, death in the family, bankruptcy, a loss of job. Those are, those are hard forms of stresses. Those are difficult to handle on your own. So what do you do in order for you not to suffer physically because of stress or that kind of difficult stress? You know what you need to do? Seek help. If you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling down, if it's a serious downturn on your business or employment, if you've lost a family member or your, your marriage is not okay, seek help, my friends. Reach out to family. Those are kinds of stresses that you might not be able to handle alone. So if you don't want to get sick because of those kinds of stresses, go out and seek help from friends. Humingi po tayo ng tulong. Pangayo og tabang. Tawagi ang inyong mga amigo. I went through that kind of stress. I was depressed. For some reason, I felt a serious depression. What was that? Three years ago? So what did I do? I knew that I couldn't. Out, you know, I couldn't think it away. I couldn't run it away. Meaning, I couldn't exercise so it will just go away. So what did I do? I asked for help. I asked for help from my, my wife who asked help from my friends. And they came to my rescue and provided me comfort and support and encouragement and rebuke during that difficult time. Now, but there's another kind of stress that we all experience. And what's that kind of stress? Those are what you call your day-to-day -day stress. Yung mga pang-araw-araw natin na stress. Now, according to studies, yung pang-araw-araw natin na stress, paano daw po natin ito mas mamanage para hindi po tayo magkakasakit dahil sa stress? Paano? Okay. So, paano po natin masosolve ang stress? Ito po daw. Alam nyo pa na ang biggest source of day-to-day -day stress, okay, the biggest source of day-to-day -day stress is the idea of stress. What do I mean? What do I mean? Allow me to explain. Ang tao daw nasi stress dahil nasi stress siya. You know what I mean? Kung ayaw mong mas stress, mas lalo kang mas stress. Ibig sabihin, if you believe life should be lived with zero stress, the more you will be stressed the first second you feel na nasa stress ka na. Example, lalabas ka ng bahay, sana walang traffic, sana ganito. Paglabas mo dun, matraffic, na stress ka. So, ibig sabihin, if you say that stress is bad for you, the regular kind of stress, if you think stress is bad for me, then your body will begin to complain and your mind will become irritable when it comes to stress. So, if you think, the, for example, training, Training is hard. For example, you're an athlete. Training is hard and it will wear you down if you think it's bad for you. But if you think training, stress, broken muscles, bruises is actually good for you, the mind and the heart will cope. That's why according to studies, there's what you call doing a pre-mortem. If you're facing the difficult days, it's best to write kung ano yung mga mahihirap na kailangan mong gawin sa araw na yon. You can write it in the morning when you wake up. For example, you say, okay, I need to meet my team. I need to talk to the bank. I need to confront my children about the current situation. Ililista mo na yung mga stressors na posible mong haharapin. And as you list them down, it's like you're a runner plotting out your training program. As you plot out those difficult hurdles that you will face during that day or during that week, yung utak mo will already begin to cope with it. Hindi siya magre-reklamo. Mahirap siya, totoo. Pero it will begin to cope with it and will try to prep itself so it can hurdle that situation. So a pre-mortem exercise really helps. You know what? how they did that study? They actually did a test on stroke survivors. I, I read this in the book called The Power of Habit. Yung mga stroke survivors, those who actually journaled the difficult parts during their um, rehab and recovery, lahat na nagsusulat ng pre-mortem recovered much faster than those who did not do a pre-mortem. So, my suggestion to you, 
You're facing stresses in the next two weeks? Yes. Face it. List them down. Accept them so that the body will cope, so that we will not be complaining in our heart. Kaya nga nagsimula tayo, di ba, sa ating uh, show today, ang sa a joyful spirit is good medicine. But a crushed spirit will wear down our bones. Kaya, harapin lang. Do a pre-mortem. So again, two types of stresses. Yung mahihirap, na walang kang trabaho, na bankrupt, meron kang sakit, meron kang depression, humingi ka ng tulong. Humingi ka ng tulong. Kung yung regular day-to-day -day stresses, harapin, ilista, i-prep yung mind and heart. Kaya natin to. Kasi kung you give up at the beginning of the day, mahihirap ka. Imagine if you go out, for example, alam mo na, uh, maulan, matraffic, uh, payday Friday, maraming projects sa office. Let's go. Let's face this. When you go there, hmm, it was not so bad. Traffic wasn't so bad. My teammates are here with me. Then you see the good things during your day. Alright? Palakpakan po muna natin yung point number two. Wala ba mga palakpak dyan? Yes. So, ano po yung ating pangatlo? Ano po yung ating pangatlo? Now, you decided to be fit and healthy. You have decided to face your regular stressors and to seek help for your a more difficult stressors. Ang pangatlo ay, you want to develop healthy habits. Because the key to being healthy is sustainability. Ibig sabihin, hindi pwedeng yo-yo ang ating diet. Hindi pwedeng you're healthy now, you're not healthy in the next day. Hindi pwedeng uh, malakas ka ngayon, the next day hindi ka malakas. Yung aking in-laws, si Daddy Eddie ba yan? Si Daddy Eddie and Mommy Emmy, they're already in their 70s. They have a very good habit of make, doing their walks in the morning. Naglalakad po sila regularly. Walking, the walking habit is very, very good. Because you don't need strenuous activity. Hindi kailangan masyadong intense. Hindi kailangan kailangan mahirap. Ang magic number or uh, period, usually pag nagbabasa ka, 45 minutes. 45 minutes lang of moderate, not too intense, not too light, moderate na exercise. So kung meron kang moderate exercise on a regular basis, then you will look forward to it and the body will begin to burn calories and you will have a strength and endurance and flexibility at hindi ka mahihirapan. Kaya my in-laws, even if we bring them on a trip to, to Japan or Hong Kong, they can still walk for hours. I need to give them a little push when they climb up the steep stairs in the in the mga rail stations ng Japan. Pero otherwise, lakad, wala silang problema sa lakad. So, develop good habits, my friend. Now, sa usapin ng good habits, sa usapin ng good habits, meron akong suggestion sa atin. Alam ko na during quarantine, hindi tayo nakakalabas masyado. So, those who have been running, na disrupt yun. Those who have been biking, na disrupt yun. Those who used to join um, Zumba classes, na disrupt din yun. So, anong pwede nating gawin? Now, mahirap kang mag-exercise ng 40 minutes in one spot. It's going to be so boring. It's going to be so boring. And I've read this book called The 4-Minute Body. Ang suggestion ng libro na yan, instead na, and it might be very applicable ngayon sa panahon na ito, instead of doing a 45-minute to 1-hour na exercise sa umaga or sa gabi, eh nakaupo ka naman maghapon, na-negate mo na rin yung benefit nun. According to this book, ang maganda daw, 4 to 5 minutes lang. Paano? 4 to 5 minutes of squats, uh, running in place, jumping jack, konting push-up, konting buhat ng ma mabigat, konting stretching, 4 minutes lang. Pero paano? 4 minutes every hour. Kada oras. Nasa bahay lang naman tayo eh. So, i-alarm mo yung uh, relos mo. Kung meron kang relos, meron kang phone, i-alarm mo yun every hour so that you tell yourself every hour, okay, nagla-laptop ka, you're working from home, you're doing something. Every hour, nag-alarm yung form. Okay, 8 o'clock, tayo. Konting jumping jacks, konting push-up, konting squats, 4 minutes, tapos. 
four minutes, if you do that for the entire day of 10 hours, that's 40 minutes. Ang maganda doon, every hour, tumataas yung iyong heart rate, gumaganda yung blood flow, gumaganda yung metabolism mo. So kung susumahin mo, yung four minutes, four to five minutes sa buong araw, mas maganda daw yun kaysa nag-running ka nga ng umaga ng alas ng 40 minutes, nakaupo ka naman nakahilata the whole day, hindi ka naman gumagalaw, na negate din yung benefit na yun. That's why my encouragement to you, exercise 4 to 5 minutes every hour. Kaya ba natin yun? Kaya ba natin yun? Sa tingin ko, kaya natin yun eh. Kaya natin yun. Kung tayo ay sumunod dun sa number one to decide to be fit and healthy. Okay? Isang fit and healthy is to eat well. To eat well. Manage what we eat. Eat um, healthy food. Alam nyo ang model ko kasi, yung, yung Japanese. Maraming diet. Alam nyo, what's the best diet? The best diet is the diet you can sustain. Kasi kahit na anong klaseng diet yan, kaya mo lang gawin two months and then it recurs yung, yung bad habits mo, bumabalik din, hindi mo rin siya masusustain. That's why it's important for us to keep a healthy diet na sustainable. Halimbawa, tinanggal mo completely yung rice, hindi ka kumakain ng kanin. Well, if you can sustain that, good. Tinanggal mo lahat ng meat. If you can sustain that, maybe good. But it's good to sustain. Now, ano yung healthy combination. Sabi ng mga doktor, it's never about something magical. It's all about balance and moderation. Konti-konti lang. Eat like a bird daw. Eat like a bird. Good morning, Kuya Gilbert. Good morning, Ate Amy. Good morning to our friends who are watching. Stay healthy and stay fit. So eat right. Pero meron din kaming ginagawa dahil uh, tayo ay mahilig mag-snacks tayo po ay gumagawa ng healthy snack. So, if you want to snack, magpa-plug po muna ako. Yung picture na yan, yan po yung picture ng aming mga workers. Nagpunta po doon sa DOST laboratory. Gumawa na naman ng healthy snacks na ating cheese balls. Itong cheese balls na ito ay napaka-healthy po talaga. Gawa sa kanin at munggo. With just a little bit of uh, cheese for flavor. But ito pwedeng kainin ng bata, pwedeng kainin ng baby. In fact, tanggalin mo lang yung cheese, udurugin mo siya, it's already baby food. That's how healthy it is according to our scientists at DOST. Kaya, we are offering this all over the country. If you want to partner with us, do let us know. We want to bring these healthy products all over the country kasi tayo po ay mahilig mag-snacks. Kung mag-snacks na rin tayo, mag-snacks na tayo ng cheese balls. Tingnan yung aming mga workers. I'm so proud of them in their full PPE at the, the Food Laboratory of the Food Nutrition Research Institute ng DOST. Gumagawa po sila ng cheese balls dahil naubusan na po ng supply ng cheese balls but maglalabas na po ng bagong batch in a few weeks and hopefully we could spread this all over the country especially during this nutrition month. If you want to partner with us, if you know LGUs who want to do feeding programs, we will be happy to share this product with you because this was developed by food scientists in the Philippines na dapat nating tangkilikin. Ito ang dapat nating snacks. Okay? So eat healthy, moderate exercise, 45 minutes a day. 4 minutes every hour, better. Sa diet, paunti-unti, but dapat sustainable. Okay. Si Lolo Nems is eating healthy daw. He's eating saging now. Oh, kumakain daw siya ng saging. Yes, fruits and vegetables. Alam niyo yun si Lolo Nems. He's now 70 years old, still plays very good tennis. Huh? 70 years old, but still eats uh, healthy Dahil na na heart attack na siya, natuto na siya sa kanyang kahilig-hilig sa crispy pata dati. Yes. Sabi ni Kuya Gil, masarap and healthy ang Stuki's cheese balls. Thank you very much, Kuya Gil. Sana tangkilikin ng mga bata sa buong Pilipinas. Now, next tip. If you want to be fit and healthy, you need to do it with a family. Kasi kung ikaw lang ang nag exercise Ikaw lang ang kumakain ng maayos. And the rest of the family, kung ano-ano ang kinakain, nakahilata buong araw, at wala namang ginagawang any form of exercise, hindi mo po masusustain yan. Because mas masaya, mas sustainable if you're doing it with the family. For husbands and wives. Ito yung suggestion ng aming mga church counselors on um, 
pair a husband wife relationship mas maganda daw na meron kayong ginagawang mag-asawa na hindi nyo ginagawang pangkaraniwan na bilang mag-asawa. Halimbawa, syempre magkatabi kayo sa gabi, magkasama kayo sa trabaho, magkatuwang kayo to raise your family. Kung yun lang, regular lang yun. Mas maganda daw if you have another activity na will help the marriage. Kaya biking together, yoga together, walking together, like Daddy Eddie and Daddy, Mami Emmy, they've been doing it for years. Yung mga maliliit na bagay na yun will sustain it will sustain the marriage because it will make you better friends. Kahit na magkagalit kayo bilang mag-asawa or bilang mag-parents, pero pag nag-walking kayo, nag-running, or kung nag-biking, nag-zumba, or nag-pingpong, or nag-tennis, or nag-badminton, I know si Uncle Lando and Auntie Myla Gallardo, they play table tennis together. And they help the children of Iligan learn table tennis. And they help me and many kids. So do it with the family. Staying fit, and eating right, you need to do it with the family. Malinaw? So, kaya ba natin to? Kaya kaya. Number five, last but not the least. Okay? Ano ba talaga ang key to be fit and healthy? Ang goal natin yan is to live a long and healthy life. Yung hindi yung bigla na lang tayong nagkasakit at bigla na lang namatay na maaga, malungkot yon. Siyempre, meron tayong genetic issues. Yung aking mommy, maagang nag-pass away kasi yung tatay niya, maaga din. Maaga din. Posibleng stressful din yung buhay niya dahil marami siyang inatupag na mga problema. Pero meron kang given sa buhay mo. Kung ganun na talaga, ganun talaga. Wala kang magagawa doon. Kahit ba naman pinaka-healthy ka, pag talagang nagka-cancer ka, magka-cancer ka. Halimbawa, imagine si Lee Chong Wei, world number one badminton player, one of the greatest athletes you can find. Biglang nagka-cancer sa ilong. Ibig sabihin, those genetic issues, medyo mahirap pong tanggapin yung mga yon. Okay. So, thank you very much, Coach Henry Daut. Timely tips, napakaganda. Thank you very much. Uncle Henry is the ultimate athlete and uh, sports and health uh, advocate in the Philippines. Okay, do it with your family. Pero itong pang, pang lima, if you study daw, so what they did was in the 1940s, 1930s, they did a study. They followed 7,000 people. For not just 7,000, they followed many people for 75 years. The Grant and Gluek study is the longest study on human adult development. Yung bang paano ka tatanda, na healthy, at magiging successful sa buhay. Yun yung pakay nung the Grant and Gluek study. Research nyo, hanapin nyo yan, i-google. The Grant and Gluek study. According to Grant and Gluck study, tingnan nila yung mga tao, no? galing Harvard, Boston, kung ano yung pinaka-factors para tayo ay mabuhay ng mahaba, mabuhay ng healthy. Tinignan nila yung factors at hindi lang happy, healthy pa, kumita pa ng pera yung maman pa. Happy, healthy, and wealthy. Paano po daw tayo magiging happy, healthy, and wealthy? According to the Grant Gluck study, wala siyang kinalaman masyado sa, sa ating edukasyon or sa ating yaman. Actually, sabi nung Grant and Gluex study, itong number five factor natin na ito is more important than exercise. More important than exercise and good diet. Alam nyo kung ano ang magbibigay sa atin ng long life? A happy life? Number five, the secret to happiness, good health, and long life in this nutrition month is really good relationships. The key to long life, health, and good well-being, good relationships. Kung maayos daw yung relationship natin sa bahay, mas maigi pa yun to extend or to make our lives healthier than exercise. So hindi ko sinasabi hindi tayo mag-exercise. Pero ang sinasabi ko, nag-exercise ka na nag-exercise, pero kung kaaway mo naman yung napakaraming tao, posibleng mas iikli ang iyong buhay. Kaya, 
mas magandang i-maintain natin yung good relationships. Again, hindi ko isinasantabi na meron talagang mga genetic factors, but if we can do something, this is one of our priorities. Bakit? Kasi isa sa pinaka-stressful na bagay ay conflict. To those who want to learn how to manage conflict, check the previous episode. Yung previous episode, doon natin pinag-usapan yung conflict. So, ano ang ating key relationship sa buhay? Relationship sa bahay. It will give you rest. Kung maayos yung relationship mo sa bahay. Relationship sa trabaho, mga ka-office mates, it will give you productivity. Hindi ka ma-overburden. Relationship mo sa iyong wider community, sa iyong mga neighbors, sa iyong mga kaibigan, napakahalaga din po nung mga relationships na yon. So keep those relationships well and you will live a happier and longer life. Meron pa akong napakahalagang key relationship pero ikukwento ko yan mamaya lamang. Okay? So yun po yung limang mga lessons on how to stay healthy and happy. Did you learn something from that? Kaya ba natin to? Kaya! Kayang kaya. If we do our part, if we decide, if we manage stress, if we develop healthy habits, if we do it with our family, our spouses, if we build good relationships, then we will have healthier bodies and we'll live longer lives. Okay, palakpakan po natin ang ating mga kababayan who are choosing to be healthy, my friends. So, check out those who want to learn um, about conflict management. Previous episode po yan, my friends. Okay, finally, last segment na po tayo. Let's proceed to the last segment. All right, last and final segment. What's trending? Ano po ba ang trending sa kahapon at sa kagabi? Alam niyo ko anong trending? Alam ko alam niyo to. Ito yung trending. Okay? Yan po yung nasa balita. Yan po yung trending daw. Panalo na tayo. We beat UP prediction. Congratulations Philippines. Let's do it again in July. I'll talk about what's Good with that and what's not so good about that statement. In fact, marap pagkarami ng memes na lumabas dahil dito. Pano ore natin tong uh, meme na ito? Oh, tingnan nga natin kung nandito yung aking meme. Ayan, pano ore natin to ha? Pano ore nyo to? Ay, nawala yung video ko. Nawala yung video ko. Okay, hindi na lang. Bakang hindi ko na na uh, attach pala yung video ko. Yung mga kababayan natin, nagchichir. Kasi nga, sabi ni Secretary Roque, Yehey! Um, we've already beat UP. Now, UP, okay, ito po yung ating comments dun sa statement na yan, okay? Itong statement na ito can easily be misinterpreted and read. Now, few things. What's not so good about it? Okay? What's not so good about it na sa tingin ko from a public speaking perspective, okay? Hindi ko po hinuhusgan si pa Secretary Roque. From, because I'm a communicator, from a public speaking perspective, the way he delivered it is para siyang basketball game. Na parang, yehey! Nanalo na tayo! Para siyang basketball game, UAP, para siyang Miss Universe. Kaya yung mga lumabas na memes, parang basketball game. That's why the comments that you got were about ang next daw na kalaban ni Secretary Roque is yung Ateneo, one big fight. Meron namang mga nagsasabi, Ko, uh, UP is not our enemy. Our enemy is COVID. Bakit? It was a manner problem. I think it was a delivery uh, challenge. Yung pagkasabi niya, is something that elicits negative reactions. Kasi, yay, we beat UP! Ang narinig ng tao, we beat UP. So parang lumalabas na kalaban ni Secretary Roque at ng administrasyong ito ang UP. Siyempre, yung konteksto nito, maraming kritiko ng administration na galing sa UP. Yun yung konteksto. Kaya, pag binasa ng mga tao yan, para ang narinig ka agad, we beat UP. So, sa tingin ko, meron bang point of improvement si Secretary Roque? Meron. Kasi sa delivery niya, it elicited that image of a fight between schools, of a fight between UP versus the administration. Para siya bang, in English, para medyo merong tono na gloating ng konte, Parang nagyabang ng konte na parang na-down yung isa. But, 
here's the good thing about it also. If you read it closely, masama ba talaga yung sinabi niya? Basahin po natin yung sinabi niya. Panalo na tayo. Sinong tayo? Pilipinas. We beat the UP. What? Not beat the UP, the University of the Philippines. Although in the ears of many, pack period na yun, we beat UP. Actually, we did not beat UP. We beat the prediction. Congratulations, Philippines. Let's do it again in July. Ito yung gusto kong sabihin. Yung mga scientists and statisticians natin sa UP, na sila yung nagpa-plot kung gaano karami yung COVID cases. Ninanais ba nila? Nagdadasal ba sila? Are they wishing? Are they hoping? Are they encouraging the Filipinos to beat their predictions? Actually, the answer is yes. Sila mismo, yung mga statisticians, mathematicians sa UP, are hoping and praying na hindi magkakatotoo yung kanilang pinoproject na 40,000. Pero ano po yung totoo? At ito din yung point of improvement dapat ni Secretary Roque. Kasi yung report ng DOH, hindi nga umabot ng 40,000. Yung reported! Pero yung totoo, yung reported ng mga laboratories, lagpas 40,000. So, did we all beat the prediction? Actually, no. We actually did not beat the prediction. Malungkot ba yung mga taga-UP statisticians na hindi natin na-beat yung prediction? Malamang malungkot yun sila. Hindi yun sila nagbubunyi. Yung mga statisticians sa UP, hindi yun sila nagsasabi na, Yehey! Hindi na-beat ng Pilipinas yung sinabi namin 40,000. Mali sila. Wala pong nagsasabing tama o mali dito. Wala pong contest dito kung sino ang tama o mali. Ang contest dito na dapat sana mali yung predictions ng UP. Sana ninanais ng buong bansa na sana hindi tayo umabot ng 40,000. Kaya ang sabi ni Secretary Roque, let's do it again in July. Bakit? May prediction na naman yung UP scientists and statisticians kung gaano kadami sa July. Gusto ba nila na mabit natin bansang Pilipinas yung prediction nila? Gusto nila yon Sigurado ako. Gusto ba natin na mabit yung prediction na yon Gusto nating lahat yon Ingatan po natin yung mga sarili natin para mabit natin yung prediction na yon Pero, pero, kailangan bang mag-improve ng mga communicators ng administrasyon ito? Kailangan, kailangan. Kasi maraming mensahe ang dapat sanang nasabi ng maayos kung sinabi ng maayos, marami sanang mensaheng hindi mamimisinterpret kung sinabi ng in a manner na hindi prone to misinterpretation. So, meron ba akong kritisismo? Meron. Meron ba akong paglilinaw? Meron din. Tama ba si Secretary Roque na dapat sabihin natin, let's go and beat the prediction? Tama siya. Mali ba siya sa sinasabi niyang nabit natin ang prediction? Unfortunately, mukhang mali siya. So, pero sino ta talaga ang totoong bida dito? Ang totoong bida dito, hindi si Secretary Roque. Ang totoong bida dito, hindi yung mga UP statisticians and mathematicians. Ang totoong bida dito, ikaw at ako. Dahil kung hindi natin nabibit yung prediction ng UP, ibig sabihin palala ng palala yung cases sa Pilipinas. Kaya dapat tayong lahat ay magsumikap na mabit ang prediction ng UP. Sana mabit po talaga natin next month. Palakpakan po natin ang ating statisticians. Palakpakan pa rin natin yung intensyon ni Secretary Roque. Malinaw naman yung kanyang intensyon. Pero sana mag-improve kung paano sabihin at paano i-communicate yung mga bagay-bagay para hindi na magiging cause ng disagreement napapagulo pa, nagiging trending pa nang dahil sa hindi maayos na pagka-communicate na mga dapat i-communicate. Pero, yung intention maayos, but again, the intention can get lost in the way people are communicating. Okay? Okay. 
So, napakahalaga po nun. So, thank you very much for tuning in today, my friends. Yan po yung ating show sa araw na ito. And I would like to end with these words of encouragement. Ito po yung aking pang-ending. At ito, sabi ko, meron akong limang secret to good health. Decide good habits, manage stress, do it with your family, build good relationships. But what is really key to good health and happiness? Physical training is good. Physical training is good. But training for godliness is much better. Promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. Ibig sabihin, we can be fit and healthy, but if our hearts and our minds are not aligned with what God wants us to be, are not truthful, are not faithful, kulang sa pagmamahal, kahit na tayo ang pinakamalakas, pinakamagandang katawan, pinaka-healthy and fit, hindi pa rin po yun magiging beneficial for us. So in order for health and fitness to really benefit us, let us also train our hearts and our minds to love, to care, to be godly, to serve others, all the virtues that are good for us here on earth and also good for the life to come. Yan yung aking key takeaway dun sa buhay ng nanay ko. She might not have lived long, but I know she was a godly woman who served, loved deeply, laughed hard, served the church. And in the last days of her life, she sang hymns and she was ready to go home. Yan po ang pinakamahalaga. Thanks very much everyone for staying with me today. Celebrate Nutrition Month. Stay healthy and strong. Be physically fit and healthy, but also aim for godliness in our hearts. That's Mark your day this 1st of July. Keep yourself healthy and happy and I will see you all again this Friday.